Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the Dieter Melhorn Fishing Podcast. I hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to the show. Hey, today we're going to talk about catfish tags, tagging fish, putting a tag in a fish so you can keep track of it. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. I want to thank all you guys that have tuned into the show and come back and subscribed uh, to the download on the podcast and uh, all the folks that are watching it on YouTube. I put a bunch of these videos up on YouTube, uh, a video version of the podcast because some people like watching them. Um, and a lot of times I have guests. It's kind of cool to see who the guest is. So I've got them in both places. Uh, if you're wondering how to find this stuff depending on whether you're listening or watching this you want to find one or the other just go to my website DieterMelhornFishing.com. there's links to the podcast there's links to the youtube channel there's links to my guide service uh, i'm a licensed captain here in the carolinas doing guide trips uh for catfish and uh there's also links to the gear i use people ask about the gear all the time different stuff i got links to all that stuff on there and there's a point of contact there. There's a page that's got a email uh, where you can email me. Uh, I love hearing from you guys. Uh, I've got my comments on in YouTube now. They turned them back on. Thank you, YouTube. But um, uh, the folks who listen to the podcast, it's a lot harder to comment and give feedback and give ideas. So uh, you can go to the contact section on DieterMillhornFishing.com. Send me an email. So anyway... What I was going to talk about today was fish tags. Uh, this topic comes up uh, <clears throat> every so often in some different places. Uh, and what I'm talking about is a little tag that you put on a fish. Uh, these things have been around forever. Uh, there are very simple ones. Uh, just a little plastic, uh, almost like a plastic hair tube, whatever you want to call it. And uh, they go very complicated <clears throat> to ones that have... Uh, RF embedded encoded stuff in them, ones that have transmitters. Mainly the ones I'm going to talk about, those are more on the scientific end where you have people doing some really high-end scientific research. Uh, some of them are radio telemetry to where you can track fish and all that kind of stuff. What I'm going to talk about, because I got a lot of first-hand information on this because I have dealt with them extensively, and that is the fish tags that you yourself put in fish. Now let me say this. In some places, that is illegal. Uh, so before you get a bright idea and you want to go buy some of these tags and start tagging, check your local laws. Some places it's illegal to tag fish. Um, but where we're at where I've done this and tried it, it's legal. And the way this works is, with what I deal with, I dealt with a company called Fish Tagger. Fishtagger.com. It's a website. You order these fish tags. They're not cheap. Uh, even though it's just a little piece of plastic about that long, uh, they're they're not cheap. They're uh, I think when we started about a buck a piece, they're probably up to two dollars by now. Uh, the cool thing, what you're paying for is not so much the tag as you are the data collection and the database of the fish tags themselves. You buy a set of these tags. You put the, one of these tags into the fish. The tag has a number on it and uh you know it's a, a unique number every tag has a different number you go to the website fishtagger.com and you enter this information into their database you can put as little or as much information in there as you want and if somebody catches that fish they see that number they see that website got good enough eyes to read this stuff and the wherewithal or they're home cleaning the fish they can go and enter that information that tag again it will show up as hey this fish was caught at such and such a place or such as such and such a date it weighed this much <clears throat> and it's a cool way to keep track of these fish now there is a downside to it and we'll get to that in a second but we started doing this, uh, I don't know, I probably started doing this 15 years ago. And uh, we found these tags, we found this tagging program. And this isn't the only one, by the way. There are a lot of different places you can order these tags. The thing that is unique to this system is the database, the online platform that they have for keeping track of the tags and anybody out there having access to it. A lot of times you get these tags and they've got a unique number and all that kind of stuff. But 
nobody knows where to go to find out whose tag it is. And, you know, that's kind of the tough part. The state here, uh, North Carolina has done it. South Carolina has done it. They have tag fish. There's a little number on the tag that you call. Usually it's a 1-800 number. Got an automated system. You punch in, answer some questions, and uh, you can, you know, that's how you can figure out, you know, get your information out there, basically. The bad thing with those is they're not really tracking the fish and the recatch. It's not public information. A lot of these, like they do with some of the uh, hybrid bass programs they've got on Lake Norman, you actually get a prize. You get 100 bucks if you catch one of these fish with a tag and turn it in. So it's more for the state to get the data, the biologists, so that they can keep track of these fish, growth rates, where they're caught, that kind of thing. Now, like I said, there's a lot of different people that make these things. You can find them on Amazon. You can buy these things. They're easy to apply. Uh, basically, it's got a long needle uh, tube. It's shaped like a hypodermic needle. It's got an angle on one end, and uh, you insert the tag into it. The tag has like a little V shape to it. The tag is almost like a J shape, but it's a real steep V pointed on one end. A little bitty barb sticks up, and uh, you inject that into the fish and uh, it stays in pretty good sort of and again we'll get to that in a second and uh, you put these things in there and we have tracked them we we had several fish that were recalled we tagged a couple of hundred fish uh, in the Carolinas and some of these fish were recaught. Some of them were never caught again um, that we know of. But the one thing we noticed, and this brings me back to the downside of tagging, is that there seemed to be a time period within that we caught these fish. It seemed like about 18, maybe 20 months you would catch these fish. Um, <clears throat> during that time period, we saw some interesting information on how fast, how far the fish traveled. Uh, we saw some inter interesting information on the growth rates of the fish. Um, but the long-term research as far as tracking one for a decade to see how it grows, where it goes, all that kind of stuff, I question whether it's possible because here's the deal. I think these fish expel the tags. Uh, and I'm speaking to catfish more than other species, and I'll tell you why. Um, we just did not see the the tags stay in these fish as far as we know. We should have had more fish showing up two years, three years, four years. Because like I said, some of these fish were tagged 10 years ago. And either A, every one of them got caught and they got killed and they, or they were never caught again. Um, or the tags came out. What happens with the fish? And any of you guys who have fished enough, especially for catfish, catfish don't have scales. No secret right there. I mean, some people may not know that. Catfish don't have scales. Most fish have scales. Um, catfish don't. And I think that is part of the reason they're able to expel these tags. Uh, if you've ever caught a catfish that has a big hole in the side of its mouth, Almost look like something's been torn out of there uh, or, or places inside your mouth that are like that. Um, the one thing about a catfish, they're, they're pretty tough customers. Uh, they're pretty resilient and they can take a beating. Uh, any of y'all that have seen them with some of these cuts and scars, the stuff they go through during spawn, they can take a beating and they just keep on a ticking and one of the things that these fish are able to do is basically like when they get a hook in the corner of their mouth. A lot of people say those hooks rust out of there very quickly. Well, that is not true. That's one of the biggest lies in fishing. We'll get to that in another podcast. But what happens with, with these hooks, they will develop like a little callous, calcified, cysty little thingy. Uh, I'm sure there's a nice scientific name for it around that. Basically, it's a dead place. And... That skin dies, it creates a basically a, a nice sealed off area around it, and that piece falls off. Uh, you see this with catfish, you know, with hooks in the corner of the mouths from trot lines and crappy jigs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I believe the same thing happens with the fish tags. Uh, you put these things into their back, uh, right around the dorsal fin, which is that fin that sticks up on the top, like on jaws, the fin you see coming out of the water is a dorsal fin. Uh, 
and you put it in right next to it there's a bony section through there and what I believe happens is these things basically are ejected by the fish uh, it, it, it it just seems like we don't get enough long-term customers out of these things for them to really be an effective research so in the short term it's pretty cool you can see if you catch another fish you know in a relatively short amount of time like i said i've caught some uh, i had one uh, i think in a video a while back uh, richard warsco had caught it uh, and I caught it about five, six miles away. About two months later, there was one that a buddy of mine, Jeff Manning, caught in a tournament we were both fishing in years ago. Went all the way to the lower end of the lake, about 15 miles away. We weighed it, released it, tagged it, and I caught that fish about a year later, 15 miles away where he caught it, within about a half mile of where he caught it at. So, that was pretty cool. Now that fish was tagged again. This is within that one year, two year time frame. Uh, but for whatever reason, it's like they just don't hold these tags in there. So I bring all this up. Some people are interested in tagging fish to see if they're catching the same fish, see how much they grow, see how big they get and all that kind of stuff. And my basic info that I've seen so far is uh, don't expect these fish to hold those tags very wrong. I may be totally wrong. There may be some people out there that have some of these that have been in there 10 or 12 years or something, but we have not had really, really good luck. And I think with the, especially on some of our lakes, with all the pressure we've got, uh, with during tournaments, around tournaments, uh, people pretty fishing, all the fish that are caught, I think a lot of these fish should be showing up and uh that or we've got way more fish than we have any idea out there and they're never getting caught twice which i find hard to believe but i, I just think that you know if you're going to get into these things just if you're going to buy some like i said they're not cheap to get into just be aware of that um are they a good research tool i don't know i think maybe for some short-term stuff they may be uh is it going to give you any long-term data uh i don't really know uh, i i would not be banking on it we hoped it would uh, we hoped we would get some long-term feedback on, on it, and uh, we were kind of disappointed. Now, maybe there's a better way to tag them. Maybe there's a better tagging system out there, and there could be. That would be cool. Love to get you guys' feedback on that. Uh, if you know of a tagging system for fish, uh, especially for catfish, scaleless fish, uh, let me know about it. It seems like the scaled fish hold these tags better, and that may have to do with their skin. Uh, any of y'all that know anything about taxidermy, you can't mount a catfish in the same way you can a striped bass or a redfish uh, or, you know, some of these other fish out there. The skin, because the way the skin is on them, it just doesn't work for the whole tanning process and not having scales probably plays a part in that. But yeah, scale fish seem to hold these tags better. I would be curious to see how long I know the CCA... Uh, does some stuff with redfish and tagging them i'd be curious to know how long they keep their tags and those fish how long they've had them show up they do a program down there where uh they tag a bunch of fish and if you catch one you can win a lot of cool stuff a lot of money trucks that kind of stuff um uh, i think tagging fish for a program like that would be cool because um uh, you know, you only need them in there for, you know, maybe six months, maybe a year or so. Uh, but yeah, I'd be curious to uh, get some feedback from you guys on that. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Some people have asked about it. It pops up every now and then. And I know I've got a good bit of experience doing that and dealing with it. And uh, like I said, I have not done any tagging since then. We uh, did it for a few years, uh, tagged several hundred fish. And uh, just the, the reward uh the return on the investment was just not there so that's kind of my take on it uh you know if you want to try it in your area and see how it works uh like i said for a short-term thing i think it would work out pretty good uh say so you wanted to have a some type of little you know tournament deal to where you tag 10 or 15 fish and then whoever called them and you know could bring them back to whatever bait and tackle shop and i think that would be cool it worked for that but uh, i think the long term i don't know if it's very effective so that's my take on it. We figured we'd throw that out there so you guys could uh, give you something to think about. And uh, if you got any comments, like I said, go to my website, DieterMillHornFishing.com. Send me an email, questions about this, ideas about it. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, but for now, we'll just catch you out on the water. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. 
I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no, do do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good. <laughs>